Hello again, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's Mobile Mechanics. Looking at a 2009 Ford Focus C Max. It is the 1.6 HDI there. We have a windy day out here today. Uh, looking at this, I've got the codes here, I've just done a scan. So this guy has got a mechanic, there's already a mechanic here actually at this place. Um, but he can do the EGR, he said, but he cannot do the DPF, so he's called me in here to do it. We have these codes P242F, P2458, P242F. So this is the messages we have on the dash there, engine malfunction and the engine management light. So let's go back out of here, see, if, see what happens when we do a quick raise on these. Usually the EGR might temporarily erase but the DPF one won't, so let's do a quick erase. It's finished we'll go back in and read the codes and we should have the dpf one to come immediately back come on it's taking us time a little bit i'll pause it that's just acting a little bit slow there so let's just go back and do the quick read and you can see there, yeah, we've got the one fault back for the uh, DPF. Let's go back. Live data. Oh, no, sorry. I've gone the wrong way. Whoops. Back in here. Now I need to go to live data. This thing is sort of struggling to accelerate. doesn't really want to accelerate it takes a little bit of time to load up we need to look for the differential pressure now I can see why it's struggling to accelerate 41 kPa 41 or 42 kPa there and that is 410 millibars in normal measurements or to PSI 5.9 so again the same usual process what you if you've been watching my videos I'd normally use is the compressor here hooked up to one of my cleaning fluids now if you noticed on my uh, last maybe five or six videos maybe ten videos up to ten videos I think maybe I've done uh, I haven't really been counting but I was normally using this winds winds fluid now it's been working okay, but there's a few vehicles it's been struggling on, so I decided, as you've known already, to have a look around. I tried this JLM stuff, um, which kind of worked in the same sort of um, region as this. It gave me the same sort of results, um, and it's a, it a lot more expensive, I'll be honest. Um, this was... Uh, I can't remember how much these are. I think they were something like you know, 50, 60 pound a bottle. Whereas this is a bit cheaper and I'll get five liters. Um, I had a Ford Transit now custom recently. I tried this, it didn't work. And I tried the, J the JLM, it didn't work. So I decided to try this stuff. The Launch UK Particle Filter Cleaning Fluid. Now I had it on the Transit Custom recently and um, I did make a video on it. Um, but I decided not to put it up. But I've got the video somewhere and I'll try and put it up. Um... I used both of these fluids and it didn't work. Now I decided to go back afterward the video and use one of these on it. I had to order one of these online. These are you order them online, and so after I put this in, it worked immediately. So I think this I've been trying. So I've had four or five batches of these JLMs, and obviously I've been using it for a while. Now I've got four or five bottles of this, and I've been trying it. So best results i think i've had so far is with this stuff so i think i'm i'm probably gonna end up sticking to this launch stuff from here on out and uh we'll order some more of this in and i'm gonna use this today on the c max and see what results we get 
So with this fluid here, you're actually supposed to dilute it 50-50 with water. I've got my water here. And we're going to dilute it half the bottle with water. So you can actually get two vehicles out of one of these bottles here. Now just over here, I've just disconnected that. Turn that upside down. This is the differential pressure sensor here on these 1.6s. So if you look back at the engine, it's over here. And I've disconnected the lower hose here inside one this is the one that goes before the dpf so i'll get this little probe here stick it down the hole and we're just going to insert it all the way down until it reaches the bottom then we'll insert the uh, plastic cone there just to seal it up just like that so that's it we've got the hose in and we are now ready to go so we will squeeze the trigger Now this is connected to the compressor, so this is pushing it in at around about two two bars of pressure, I think. It can go up to nine nine bars on the compressor. Now we'll let that sit for a few minutes. We'll get it squeeze a bit more in and then we'll let it sit for 20 minutes. Then we're gonna run the engine and we'll flush the rest of it in. So we're doing half of it while the engine's off. Then we're gonna let it sit for 20 minutes. Then we're gonna start the vehicle and we'll run the other half in while the vehicle's running. Now while that's sitting and resting, we're having a look around and look over here. Empty on coolant, so we're gonna get that topped up before we run the engine any further. So we'll open that up and then we have another problem over here which we're not here to look at anyway but it's got a leaking injector there the black death it is a bit raining here my toolbox is soaked okay that's the coolant topped up and it's been sat for a while now so we're gonna start it up Let it idle for a couple of seconds. And we'll just give it acceleration. Oh yeah. Already feel, feel it's a lot more responsive there. I was struggling to pick up revs before. We're getting full revs. down a bit Now while the engine's running, we're just going to push the rest of that in. This goes in the tube there, all the way down. That tube goes directly into the DPF over there. So that's it, I can see it's bouncing around there very fast, so that means that we're empty. We'll pull this out. And we'll just let that run there like that for a minute. Just so any excess fluid can drip out before we connect it back up to the sensor. Uh, that is the compressor there that I've been using. Did get a few comments on one of the last videos asking if I'd do some sort of review on this. Um, I might do a video, I don't know. It's, uh, whatever you guys think. Now that this is all dried up, we're going to connect it back up. So let's say we're all back together. You can hear the sound difference. You can hear the difference in the engine. It just sounds so much smoother. Okay, we're back inside where we have all of the lights off. But uh, oh, we've uh, obviously we've lost connection there because the ignition was off. Let's go back in. 
Uh, oh yeah, we're back on live data. This is where we left off. D I F F differential pressure. So we have two point four eight. Let's accelerate it up to say three thousand. Try and hold it there. Seventeen kPa. Twenty. Just going to increase the revs up to about four. Engine malfunction has come back on there. So we're going to be smoking a lot for a few minutes. Just drop back down to 3,000 RPM. And we should see now the, um, the pressure. Let me get that to uh, focus there. Should see the pressure dropping. We'll just let that idle back down. Let's see what we have on idle. Let's let that settle down for a minute there. Just let it settle. Let's see where we end up. Just under one kPa. So we'll go back. Now what I need to do is tell it it's had a new DPF, otherwise that malfunction isn't going to go away. OK, back on functions. DPF after treatment. Reset the DPF learned values. So I need to turn the engine off. And the ignition on for this. Yes, that's just saying if you tell her it's had a new TPF and you haven't actually put a new DPF in it or the pressure is high, then you can cause the DPF to overheat. But the pressure is now low, so we can tell her it's had a new one. But we'll wait for that to go up. We'll skip. And that's it. Operation is successful. Now we can go back 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 to diagnosis and now we should be able to clear all of the fault codes pause quick arrays now what I could do on this just to do, do it quickly is go in and then just go back and it'll do a rescan again one fault code let's go back in and see what we have read it's a little bit slow particle filter regeneration duration so we should have cleared that, really. I uh, need to might go back and do some more adaptions. Okay, we're not getting that code to clear for the DPF regeneration duration. That means the last time I tried to do a regeneration, it took way too long, and then the car just gave up, basically. We've relearned the particle filter values. That hasn't helped. So we're just going to go with doing a static regeneration, which will tell the car. It'll do its own regeneration, and then the car should just... Um, reset itself if it's going to work let's see it's telling me now to switch the ignition off so it's probably not going to work particle filter has been aborted I'll try that again with the engine off okay we should continue start the engine yeah okay do not press the throttle yes switch on the lights air conditioning and all of that yes Okay, the engine must be above 65 degrees. Now, if you do a regeneration like this, a fourth regeneration, it is advisable to change the oil afterwards. So we just need to warm the engine up now. We're going to give it a few accelerations. Ok, 
Okay, that's ready to go. So we're gonna press yes. And that should take about 10 minutes or 15. No, it has been aborted again. Okay, we've reset it all and we're starting again and now it is working. Starting to pick up acceleration there. Obviously I'm not touching that, my feet are over here. So I'm gonna stand a bit clearer because I'm getting smoked out. It's in a very enclosed area here. Okay, so that is all past there. That's okay. Turn the ignition off and that's done. Now, let's see if we can get that code to clear. Auto scan again. Quick erase. Go back in. Let's go back, do a quick read again. Pass. So that's that done. We'll take it for a test drive as well. Uh, one more thing before I go as well, before we fi do finish this one up actually, I'm going to attempt cleaning the EGR without removing it. Um, I just promised a guy that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll stick, some, um, stick some cleaner through the intake and hopefully that will clean the EGR. And can't make any promises, but we'll try that and then we'll take the car for a test drive. But what I will do first now is I'm going to run the engine and see if that EGR fault comes back first. Um, and then I'm going to clean it and then we'll run the engine and see if the fault comes back after the clean. So that way we'll know if the clean has uh, stopped it returning. So I've moved my van over there, we're going to take it out for a run. Nice British weather we're having. Okay, the EGR hasn't come back there I've, even after the test drive, so uh, we're, gonna, we're just going to put some cleaner through the intake uh, just to prevent, hopefully prevent the EGR from sticking again and causing this issue what it's done to the DPF. Now, I believe the DPF blockage is related to the EGR. And that's what's triggered it off. So again, I'm using another bottle of the launch and I put it into this worst uh, bottle here just to spray it through the intake. So what I've done is use my pliers here to open the inlet. And I am absolutely soaking. But yeah, we're gonna carry on. I've got here my laser pedal depressor. So I'm going to use that to hold the accelerator pedal there, you can adjust it. And we're going to hold it up at about 2000 RPM. Just going to spray that in there. While the engine's running. No fault codes detected. That's it, we're all done. See you on our next video.